Beautiful. This goes live on Facebook. Let's see. Come on, baby. Crank it up. Yeah, let's do it. It's it's here it is. Three, two. Hi everyone. I am back. Dom Femulator here. Listen, I come back every week from Apex. I'm like a bad rash. I just keep on coming back and coming back. So you might need some heavy cream to get rid of this rash, but I'm still gonna be coming back. Today I've got Richie Bravo. Richie, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Dom. Pleasure to be here with you, my friend. This is so great. Now, you are down in Miami, Florida. Yes. And you're coming to me right now, to all of us, from your studio, right? That is correct. But this is my home studio for about 17 years. Well, Richard, I want to start there. You put your studio together because now, during this pandemic, you're still able to record and produce and arrange from that studio, correct? That is correct, which I've been doing for 17 years. This is incredible. Just talk to me about, about the studio, how it's set up, and what you're doing with it. Well, uh, the studio started out, you know, for me to do um, percussion and drum uh, sessions. So I've been buying little by little preamps and microphones. You know, I'm a full sale graduate. I'm a recording engineer. That's what I went to school for. Oh, interesting. So I... I have all the technical and all the, you know, training for recording. And uh, so therefore, like 17, 18 years ago, I just started building uh, my recording studio uh, because I got married. And whenever I used to go out on tour and do recordings outside, like in Hit Factory, which is a big studio here in Miami. And, uh, yeah. you know, I was taking away time from my family. So the studio brought a little me, uh, brought me home more to be with my family and I can still record at home. But would you talk about the fact, listen, Full Sail is a real top recording artist school that's in Florida, correct? It's in Orlando, Florida. That is correct. Just talk about, and you graduated there, by having that level of recording skill, just talk about how that's been able to help you out with your studio and even in the recording studios that you've traveled in. How has that helped you out? Well, uh, Dom, I did an internship in, in Criteria Hit Factory. I was there for quite a few months. And I did assisted sessions for the biggest uh, engineers in the world and the biggest band. I recorded for uh, Squeeze. I recorded for the movie Cocoon. I did a lot of stuff as an engineer, you know, just soaking and learning on all the stuff. Uh, and I brought all that uh, information. And I always wanted a recording studio, you know, not a home home studio but a real studio yeah so therefore it just it just built up to the point where you know the industry all the musicians weren't able to go to hip factory criteria and do sessions and hiring and you have to hire an engineer you have to pay for studio time you have to pay for assistant you have to pay for a catering you have to pay for a lot of things so the home studio it made all the producers uh, more access to yourself basically and that's what's been happening, I believe, in the music industry for the past 20-some years. Well, what's amazing now is by having this knowledge of recording and by having your home studio, this really has allowed you during this pandemic to continue working. That is correct. It actually, be, let's say pre and post pandemic, it hasn't really affected me. I, I always been able uh to record the only thing that obviously everybody live performances and clinics is the only thing that pretty much stopped but as as far as recording if anything i've been recording more to tell the truth boy this is this is great for everyone to hear because when people join us we've got jeff jeff towers joined us uh tessie ward sean preston great stuff carlos goodsman loss is in the house Oh, that's, that's, that's my, I call him my left hand and my right hand. You know <laughs> Listen, talk about Carlos for a second. Carlos, first of all, he's a fantastic drummer himself, and he's just a great technician, and, and he's just, you know, a production guy at the highest level. You work with him on many occasions in a lot of touring when you were with him, for sure. What's it like working Absolutely. with Mark? He's the best drum tech uh stage manager 
uh, all around. He's a, to me, he's the best in the world. He's a world class, like you said, drummer. And uh, he just, I know him for a very, very long time. He knows my beginnings. You know, uh, when I met Russ Miller uh, almost 30 years ago, and mm -hmm. uh, we've been really good friends, and uh, he, he's been helping out on my career. Uh, as far as the studio as well as as my live performances, he's uh, my uh, uh, he's uh, my manager for a uh, tour manager for Barry Gibb, as you know. Yeah. And he does all my re all my recording sessions. That he I'm I'm blessed to have him, and uh, he's he's been a blessing in my life all over all around. Not only musically, but as as a person, he's a, an amazing human being. Oh man, it's it's so great. And Carlos, thanks for joining us for sure. I mean, he puts in such great amount of time, and he's so knowledgeable at what he does. And listen, absolutely, you, you are doing so much, which is so exciting. Let's go back to uh, the beginning. So, if I remember correct, we did a, a, an, an interview on the sessions panel. So I ask everyone to go to absolutely. the sessions panel on YouTube and watch the Richie Bravo interview that is there, because on top of this interview from Apex. And that interview, I want people to really understand what you do, Richie, because you are such a great player. I've had the chance to be on stage with you several times. You always impress me with your playing, whether it's drum set or percussion. You are always so in the moment and in the now, and you always give 100%. Well, it's something that I love to do, Dom, and uh, I've learned that from my dad very early in life. I've been playing percussion and drums since I was like seven. I have a almost a musical family. My two older brothers are professional, professional and amazing musicians. Mm -hmm. Junior and Jerry, both of them, uh, they're they. I've been playing all my life with them, and they're just as good. And uh, you know, I've been blessed to have brothers, musical brothers. And I was I was a little one, so I was always the one tagging along, you know, <laughs> whenever they rehearsals and stuff. So I, actually, when I first my got my first drum set, my dad in 1977, it was a four-piece Ludwig set, and my brothers learned to play it quicker than I, and they used <laughs> to make fun of me, you know. And so, but I would that would like make me more into the to playing. And what happened was everybody, uh, you know, moved on their own instruments. Like my brother Jerry plays bass, guitars. He plays saxophone. My brother. Junior, he plays uh, guitars, any type of string instruments. He's an amazing piano player. And I stayed on what everybody bangs on, which is drums and percussion. You know? <laughs> now, talk about the influence of music, because if I believe it, it's your, your, you have Venezuelan and Puerto Rican lineage, right? That is correct. Uh, my father loved music. He's my main musical influence since I was... I don't know, two, three, four years old. And uh, uh, he was Puerto Rican. He married my mother, which is alive. She's lives in Orlando. And uh, yeah. she, you know, they got married. And uh, my brother, Junior, was born in New York. My brother, Jerry, was born in Venezuela. I was born in Venezuela. And in 1977, my dad decided that he wanted us to learn English and uh, just have better opportunities. So we came. To the U.S., just like everybody, you know, like all the immigrants. Yeah. And uh, we've been, I've been here. I've been blessed in this country since 1977. And uh, we all went through the public system, uh, school system. My brothers yeah. and I, we, you know, and obviously I did. As, instead of going to college, I did. I went two years for full sale. My yeah. brothers went to uh, University of Central Florida, and they went to to regular school for music as well. And uh, you know we've been doing music ever since, Dom. Every ever since 1977, we've been doing music and we haven't stopped. So we're we're following our dreams. Boy, that is so beautiful. When you think about it, Richie, you know, as when my grandparents came to America and my parents were born in America, it's the immigrants of coming from Italy or coming from Venezuela and Puerto Rico. It's this information that's really what America is really about. And sometimes we lose touch of that. That. America, we really are from everywhere. And the, the fact that you have gotten that influence from Venezuela and Puerto Rico, that influence from your parents, and you're bringing that to your music. Listen, when I hear you play, you have such great ears to hear music. You know, in all, you, you're so open to it that that's a whole nother skill base. 
<laughs> well, Dom, you know, coming again from Venezuela, from a Puerto Rican dad, coming to the U.S., so I can give you an example of what you just said musically, uh, a mixture of salsa and a mixture with the Beatles and a mixture of uh, Herbie Hancock and a mixture of uh, <laughs> Journey and a mixture of Billy Joel and a mixture of Elton John and a mixture of The Who. Uh, you understand? So I've this is pretty much me and also I was classical trained percussionist. Well, that's beautiful. Well, that's beautiful. So, so classically trained, you, you, you learn keyboards? Uh, I was more snare drum, but I did play timpani and a little bit of mallets. Yeah. But I was more the orchestral auxiliary percussionist is what I, was my main thing until I went to full sail. Actually, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play in a symphony. I sort of detoured a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> So when you were in school, were you in the music program in school? Absolutely. Since the fourth grade, I was blessed and lucky enough to, since my elementary, we had concert and symphonic band. Boy, talk about that for a second, Richie. I mean, it's so important that people understand that the music program in our school, public school systems in America, are so important in growing from fourth grade all the way up. Just talk about that experience of playing with the concert band, maybe with the jazz band, all those different experiences with the orchestra? Yes, well, at the time uh, in uh, my elementary in Eatonville, Florida, this is uh, close to Orlando. And uh, I remember, you know, I was, I made the audition for a percussion and I made a snare drum. You know, uh, how old was I? Maybe I was like 10 years old. And uh, fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade, I went all the way. I went to uh, Tuscola Middle School in uh, Winter Park, Florida. And uh, John Sauce, I'll never forget. He was my band director. He played trombone, but he was always focused on percussion. We had a stage band. I was on concert band, stage band, and percussion ensemble. After yeah. school, we had percussion ensemble. And we did contests to... Uh, uh, there used to be concerts and uh, competition in Tampa. So, you know, I, I, got, I won myself a couple of blue ribbons, which is first place, and red ribbon, which is second place. We also did win ensemble contests and uh, a few things. When I was, I'm talking about my, I was 12 years old, 13. Yeah. And at the time, so I was doing that classical stuff. But when I would get home, at the same time, I would play salsa music with my brothers. <laughs> I had, we had a salsa band at the time. So always, I always had the mixture of both worlds. And also, think about this. I was playing salsa, which is kind of different percussion from classical. And I was also playing with uh, pop groups with other kids playing drum set. <laughs> so I always had, <laughs> always had my hands on full combination on drums and percussion, always. Well, it's amazing how you blend it. And I, I've done you know performances with you where you played percussion. I heard you play drums. When we did the benefit, it was a, a memorial for Joe Hibbs in Nashville. Absolutely. Man, it was fun. So great. I sat behind you and you sounded so, so great. But you made this blend. It's an interesting question. Here's a question from Carlos, if you can see this, Richie. He says, Richie, working with you so much, I have firsthand knowledge of how well you blend and incorporate both percussion instruments and the American drum set as one voice. Talk about how you approach blending those rhythms and those instruments. Well, I always, um, since very early in time that I can think of, since I was always in percussion, in a percussion group, I always play with different percussionists in salsa. When I was in, uh, when you're in a classical setting, there's usually four to six to seven percussionists. And when you're playing in a pop setting, you are the drummer's other limbs. So I always thought, I, I never thought of myself as like an individual. I always was like a team player. So therefore, whenever I'm playing salsa or playing with a drum set player, I have to somehow complement and be part of whatever the drummer is leading to do. And vice versa, if I'm leading, if I'm the drummer, mm. I, you know, I, I make sure whoever's playing percussion or or drums we are in the always in the same page and i'm very extremely sensitive with that very sensitive and at a very early age 
So what, I mean, and you've worked with so many different drummers. So talk about working with Lee Levin. I mean, Lee is a phenomenal, you know, I, I think he's one of these unsung heroes. He's a great, great drummer based out of Miami. And you're on tour with them when you do the Barry Gig tour. Talk about playing with someone like Lee. Well, I've been playing since Lee since 1991, okay? And uh, it's just wonder. It, he's not only a wonderful drummer, but it, obviously the way he is, it shows in his playing. He's just yeah. an amazing human being. He's he's a very very dear friend, and he has taught me a lot. You know, playing along with him, and he's truly a world class drummer. We've done tours, and I can't tell you hundreds and hundreds, and or let me mention thousands of songs recorded with him. Yeah. And it's just a joy to play with him. And yes, I believe people need to know a little more about Lee Levin. And uh, he's just wonderful to play. I, he's one of my favorite drummers to play in the world. And and I can tell you, that as a drummer percussionist, I have played with a lot of, of my heroes. You know, I have played with uh, Steve Gadd and recorded. I have played and recorded with Vinny Caliuta. Um, I mean, I, I'm, and Lee is at, a hundred percent at that level. At that he level, is yeah. really that good. And and the thing, the only difference that sent me apart from uh, a lot of drummers is I'm so blessed to be able to do a gig. Like for example, I could do a gig with Dom. I could do a gig with Lee. I could do a gig with a drummer that I really enjoy and I do truly enjoy and appreciate and learn at the same. I I do multi functions as mm -hmm. a percussionist. And when then when it's my time to be on drums. You know, I have all this knowledge and all these things that I've learned throughout my my years playing. It's just yeah. wonderful to have th that both. I have both worlds basically. Well, it it really is amazing to see kind of what you've done because I mean you you, and I've heard you play with Lee. The way you guys lock in together is so impressive that you know you're both listening to a high level. And you bring these sounds together and you just lock in and you really sound like one player. This is an amazing thing to do. Well, one thing that Lee always sees me, sometimes we do stuff without looking at each other and we laugh. But <laughs> uh, he tells me that we feel we feel the same music mm. time. So it's like a natural thing. Uh, if you hear all the, the Barry Gibbs and the Barbara Streisand records we've done, we yeah. have recorded we're, we're not it's not overdub it's all recorded live and just I, I guess that's one thing that barry picked up on lee and i is our feel and time but it's just like a natural thing it's not a force thing so yeah. music is not forced music it should be flow always should be flowing so that, i think that's something that i have with lee boy that, that that's so beautiful you know vinnie Kalayuta says uh you know uh, thought is the enemy of flow you know Absolutely, you're, absolutely. You're I, I I agree with that. Now, so what was it like? What was it like playing with someone like Vinny? You know, playing alongside Vinny. Man, playing with Vinny, it was a pleasure. I spent well. I've done quite a few records with him, and I have talked on the phone with him. And in this occasion, uh, this is when I met Juanes, which is the artist which I'm uh, currently play, currently playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent a whole day with. It was, uh, you know, for the. It was a live session. It's in YouTube, uh, and it was just—he was very wonderful person. He was so relaxing and fun, and I got to jam with him. So I, I got to push his buttons a little bit. <laughs> so you know, off off the recording, and he's quite quite impressive and amazing human being. He's he's just out of this world, and uh, so I got to jam with him a little bit, just like I got to jam with Steve Gadd. And, I mean, and this, this, these are stories that are so powerful. Now, what was it like? Was it what was it like with Gad? Was it a different kind of a feel, different kind of a groove for sure, right? It, well, it was uh, for Ed Kaya's record, and it was live with no click. It was jump. Imagine this: me, a little kid, going to the studio with Steve Gad, having John Patitucci on bass. You know, Mike Orta, which was uh, he, God bless his soul, an amazing jazz piano player. Ed Kaya. And and Richie Brow was like, it's <laughs> like, what am I doing here? What I, I I really was a bit scared, not intimidated, but I was scared because I didn't want to be the one messing up because <laughs> everything was recorded live. Yeah. But you know what? It turned it, it turned out that we everybody did it in one take. 
but it was like Vinny said, the flow was perfect. Yeah. Well, that, that's and, probably. Uh, uh, Go ahead. Don, one thing that's very very important that I had I have to mention that I did. This is one of the recent uh, sessions, and amazing sessions that I ever had. And I have to mention I recorded in the new Russ Miller CD with Giovanni Hidalgo. Yes, and that's Russ probably. invited me. Oh my God, Dom. Oh I want to hear this. this is, I, I just recently got the recording. Russ had sent me the recording. I am blown away. First of all, talk about Russ Miller. Talk about an incredible player, producer, you know, musician at, at so many different levels. And Giovanni Hidalgo together. This this must have been a high that is even hard to explain. What was it like? Well, the you can if you can put yourself in you myself in my shoes. If you could put yourself in my shoes, there I am in his factory. I mean, this was a live session. It wasn't over them. Yeah. I got two of my heroes. I got Giovanni. I was looking to my right. I see Giovanni. And I look to my left. I see Russ. And not for nothing, the music wasn't simple either, okay? <laughs> it wasn't just like a pop record. Yeah. And I got these two monsters. And I, I, I said to myself, okay. What am I? Uh, what am I doing here? I'm not supposed to be here. This is not a. This is not a pop record. This is like like this is a, a very high musical level. But you know what? This is. I have to tell you about Russ and uh, Gio. They made me feel so comfortable. Yeah. So comfortable, which is they again to what Vinny say. They made my flow be there with them. Yeah. Yeah. And and I and I had the most wonderful. They were there for a week, and I was there for like three, four days. And uh, believe me, there's there's footage in YouTube. We recorded it everything live. There's one particular song that was so hard, I blocked myself. But then again, <laughs> there came Giovanni and Russ to help me, to you know, to carry me through through the through the song, and the flow was amazing mm -hmm. not not only the, but the band that russ picked everybody that was there the engineers it was one of the most dear sessions i ever had you know and imagine G giovanni hidalgo is my he's my buddy rich of percussion yeah yeah. he's the buddy rich of percussion yeah, he yeah. is that big and and you know russ i know russ over 30 years yeah. i know him and and he's been i, I have to say uh i've been a student of him he has taught me so much and i always call him for advice he always uh, you know tells me stuff i i love him dearly and and i love the way he plays and i seen since he moved to miami to la and i he's one of the top session players over there i'm very proud of him and and uh you know and just being in part of that cd dumb i'm extremely blessed to be in that i'm i'm I hope people can, can check out the CD. It's yeah, really it, amazing. That it really is a must to get. You know, the whole CD thing and how it's happening in music, it's so important to continue to invest in that high quality music. When I received that, I, I I was blown away by how great, first of all, how great you all played, how great the songs were, and how great the quality was of the recording. It was so clear and just so beautifully done. Oh, and that's something I have to say. I believe that's the first time uh, uh, that drum set uh, from Apex, the Panther, the Panther uh, Lab. It was the first. That's the first time it, it was in Florida, and I, I remember going to the studio and I saw it for the first time. And Russ said, "Richie, please sit down. Please hit the drums. Check it. Oh my God! That was oh the design lab. Those you drums. Saw. You saw the design lab. But yes. Oh." Oh my God. Oh my God. That's just, this is a different instrument, completely yeah. instrument, amazing drums. Boy, just talk about that for a second, because, you know, listen, it's out of the mind of Russ Miller. Leave it to Russ Miller, who's a phenomenal, brilliant mind and also is very involved. He's got designing and mechanical engineering in his background too. So that all kind of came into play in the design of the drum, of, of, of the design lab. So talk about that. What was it? What was it like when you hit the drums going around that set? Well, it just he explained to me a little bit of the constructions, the shells, uh, the bearing edge, the width of the wood of the drums, and it just is truly a different drum. I never felt anything like it. But the thing is, Dom, 
something that he told me, it sounds like it feels compressed and acute and processed. It yeah. just sounds, the drum itself sounds very open and processed. The bass drum sounds wonderful with no dampening whatsoever. Yeah. And I, I, I was just, you know, I, I was there for quite, quite a few days and I, so I got to play the drums quite a bit. And I was just completely blown away compared to all the drums. You know, I'm a Saturn uh, artist for Mapex, but yeah. this thing is like, it's just like, I don't know. It's, I don't know how to say a you know, Lamborghini or Rolls Royce yeah. or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a boutique drum set. It's just people have to check yeah. them out. People really do have to yeah, yeah. touch them and play them so they can really understand what I'm, what it is. And by the way, uh, the concept of the toms, oh my God, is truly floating in the air. Uh, he explained to me, which is a little bit complicated for me, but those toms, imagine like grabbing a tom and you hit it in the air. It yeah. feels like the drums are floating yeah. and they actually are, you know, and it's just great invention. It's just a great instrument. It's typical out of the mind of Russ Biller. Not only did he redesign each different size shell to have different qualities. The 10 is different than the 12. 12 is different than the 14 or the 16. He came up with a different design. The legs on the floor toms have a different design to give much more, you know, tone quality and longevity to the note. And the mounting system is a magnetic mounting system which is like something out of the 22nd century. It's really kind of interesting <laughs> in what Russ has put together. No, absolutely. And I tried it. I mean, you, it's, it's one thing to talk about it, Dom. Yeah, and yeah. it's a different thing when you hit the drum and you hear him. Yeah. That's, that's when you say, oh, my God, this is quite different. So I was blown away for the for the... For those drums and so i I'm, I'm blessed to be one of the first person in the state of florida to 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 get to play those drums so that was, that was <laughs> kind of cool for me also and russ was looking at my face i, was, I looked like a little kid in a candy store <laughs> russ is so special that's really fantastic now i have behind me i've got this drum set on on, on the side of the wood drum set that's a saturn four and i've got over here a saturn five so what do you have behind you there? Well, behind me here, I have a Saturn V. And uh, this drum I love dearly. It's got a story. This drum set has a really cool story, Dom. When, What's the story? Uh, a few years ago, when, you're going to love this. You're really going to love this. Um, uh, when I got went to NAM and I got signed, I went to see Joe Hibbs, okay? Mm -hmm. So... These drums were given to me by Joe Hibbs just before he passed away. Oh, and, man. And, and, you know, he gave, I have all the combinations. I have a, this is a 24 by 18. I also got a 22 inch bass drum. He gave me uh, all the hardware. He gave me everything. And then, you know, he, we're in the middle of my order and all the stuff is when, when I found out, you know, that he passed away at the airport yeah. in LAX. But, yeah. These drums are they're really in my heart, yeah, because they were given to me by Joe. So that's the story about these drum sets, which by the way, they've been in hundreds and hundreds of recording. And I, you know, they always been here, they haven't left the house ever from the Beautiful. strike from the factory, and they're just incredible drums, you know. Uh, Russ and all the guys at Mapex, you know, they do wonderful uh Mapex drums and one of the persons that turned me on before I was even ever considering Mapex was my dear uh, brother Waldo Madera. Waldo, which, uh, and, yeah, hey, he's uh, been for Mapex for a long time, for a very, very long time, and uh, he Waldo is the first person that turned me on to Mapex years ago, many, many, many years ago. We played together I, I, with uh, Ricky Martin and different artists, you know. Yeah. Waldo is a phenomenal drummer. I had the chance of being with him several times through the course of, of, my, of my global travels. Great, great guy. But talk about you and Waldo playing with Ricky Martin. Talk about those unplugged, those unplugged performances. Well, you know what? Um, I've been blessed. I've done uh, quite a few MTV Unplugs. Uh, they were uh, mainly famous in the 90s and the year 
2000s, I did a yeah. MTV unplug for a group from Chile called La Ley, very, very famous group. It, that won a several Grammys. I also did the Ricky Martin MTV unplug, which Waldo was supposed to do, but he had problems. So, um, uh, I, no, 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 I'm sorry. Lee was supposed to do that one. Waldo was, he was playing with Juan's bit. They brought Waldo in. We recorded the Ricky Martin MTV Unplug, and then after we did the Juanes MTV Unplug. So oh, I actually, I don't know, I'm blessed. I've been in three MTV Unplugs that has won Grammys. <laughs> and, and you know, <laughs> with three different drummers, I've been on percussion. And of course I had in the Ricky Martin setup, I did have semi drum set percussion setup because I had snare drums and I had floor toms and stuff. Yeah. So I had a hybrid setup. Right, right, right. And it was just wonderful. It's a great experience, you know, because we have to make, uh, we built all the arrangements, the band, as a band. Yeah. You know, the producer, Tommy Torres from Puerto Rico. And with Juanes, we, we uh, Juan Luis Guerra, very, very famous producer from Santo Domingo. He was a producer and... Uh, it was just a wonderful experience, uh, Dom. And, and you know, Waldo and I, again, like with Lee, I very blend with him. You know, he has a different concept. He's extremely musical. And you have to see Waldo playing bass, guitar, and piano. Not really? Not only does he play drums, but he's an amazing... Oh, my God. He's sat at, in sound check. In sound check, I get to the drums and he will grab the bass, for example. <laughs> and, uh, for Ricky or, 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 or Juanes. And uh, man, we, uh, Waldo is, is my brother. What can I say? I've learned a lot with him. And he's very, very technical. He, he's yeah. got a lot of chops. And, but at the same time, he's very musical and he's just a yeah. sweetheart, you know? And <laughs> I've been blessed to be, so there you go. I'm blessed to be with all these drummers, you know? But look, but you listen, the story that you have is so great by playing with all these drummers. Listen, Waldo is fantastic. Lee Levin's fantastic. So when, when you're playing with like Ricky Martin, how different is that like when you're playing gigs with Juan Ez? Oh, completely. Um, I'll put it to you this way. Ricky Martin is a marathon that you have to run at full speed, 10 miles. Juan Ez, you have to run like five miles. This is true. <laughs> Lee, Lee, and, and, and Lee Levin and uh, Waldo can tell you because I play with both of them with Ricky. And you yeah. have to play long, like 10 minute medleys, dumb, of a very high energy and very strong because they're very percussive songs. It's, it's like one yeah. is it's a little more like a mainstream pop cumbia, uh, middle of the road. But Ricky Martin, right. no. Ricky Martin is a Lamborghini and you push it to the limit is what it is, musically and physically. Incredible. It, it, it's amazing to experience the fact that you, do you chart things out? How do you, how do you prepare yourself? Well, I, uh, I, I learned something and, and uh, as, as a result of that, I learned to memorize my music. You don't read when you're on tour, it's just something you don't do. It's you have to memorize the music, and the way you do it yeah. is by taking away charts. If you if you write a chart, you will never remember anything. So uh, I can tell you a little a story, which another amazing drummer, dear friend of mine. Uh, you know, I played for Shakira for three years. Brandon yeah. Buckley is a dear friend of mine. Uh, he's in LA. He, another, he used to live here. Another great, great player. Another great, great player, Brandon Buckley. So, so I, you know, I joined the Shakira band in 1999 when the record, uh, I recorded the record uh, Laundry Service and I got called. She wanted me to play with the band. Also, as it just so happens, Brandon also recommended me with, with uh, Tim Mitchell, who's a musical director. And uh, so there, you know, I, I started, uh, we did tours rehearsals in Miami. We did tours rehearsals in New York. This is around 9-11 time, sort of. And uh, yeah. what I was, you know, was like my big gig, high profile gig, you know, to go out. And therefore I wrote something that Brenda told me, you know, Shakira, she's a perfectionist. So 
learned everything exactly the way it is. So I had I wrote everything. I mean, I had charts, and then I would put little she sheets in a in a snare drum. I would put a she sheet in this tom. I would put a she sheet on the and all over my rack, my big rack. And I remember the very first. This is a true story. The very first show, you know what Brandon did? He went to my rig and he took all my charts out. <laughs> and I. <laughs> This is a true story, and let down. I didn't do too well, man. I, I mean, I, I kind of like, you know, I, I did not play a hundred percent out of a hundred. I probably played like eighty-five percent, eighty percent, and that taught me a lesson. <laughs> what Brandon was trying to tell, was teaching me, don't read music, man. Just, just learn it. Yeah. So I actually that yeah. that lesson I, le I learned from Brandon, Brandon Buckley. That's pretty powerful. Brendan is, a, is a, a dear friend and a great player. I've done some some festivals with Brendan. He's just a phenomenal musician. And you know, listen, you consistently surround yourself with top musicians. I mean, it's so incredible to see what you've done. It's got to be your personality and your talent attracts these people. So I really believe that's the that's the lesson here. Be a good person. Be easy to get along with, and be a first rate musician. And you'll surround yourself with people that are going to be great people. Uh, you know, I've been blessed to be with really good producers. And, you know, my friends now are have been friends for a long time, Dom. Uh, you know, uh, Los is 30 years plus. Lee, 30 years plus. Yeah. Brandon, 20 years plus. I mean, I can mention all my friends. And I, and I to this day, I still work with them. At one point yeah. and another, you know, I got to play at the Super Bowl just before the pandemic. I had the pleasure to do that. I mean, I, I'm, I don't know. God's been really, really good to me, and I don't take it for granted. And I, I just try to learn. And and as the older I get, it's just like I want to leave something to the younger players because I was yeah. once young, and I, I still dream. I'm, you know, I'm 50 years old and I still dream. I have my son. I have uh, my son, Emmanuel. I have my daughter, Ayana. I have my nephew, Isaiah. Uh, my nephew, Tito. These kids um, are amazing drummers. Truly wow. amazing drummers, you know. And and by the way, not to plug, but they have their armory, uh, Mapex set, uh, all of them. And, ah. uh, you know, it's, by the way, armory drums are really, really good. I would do a gig any time hands down with a with an armor Absolutely. level of drums and uh and these kids and these kids are like they i understand they look up to me but it's like i just try to teach them to do to do what they want to do but also be a team player be a team player basically it's not one drummer plus a band no or percussionist no 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 it's everybody together it's group Tom it's a group boy this this is fantastic here's a here's a question from Bobby Angeletta a phenomenal drummer upstate New York phenomenal phenomenal teacher also what kind of things do you do to stay in shape for a Ricky Martin gig or a one s gig how do you keep yourself in shape well go to the gym Waldo used to you know I'm a little bit lazy physically but Waldo were like knock on the door this is true we would walk or run, jog about two or three miles every day, and we used to go to the gym, which I can tell you a really, really quick story. When we <laughs> when we were on tour and we were in Vegas, Waldo's gonna, you know, he, he, it was, this was very funny, I have to say this. So we were at the gym, at the, at the MGM, I believe, and uh, we're working out, we're on the bikes, we're running bikes, and I see this guy, and uh, Waldo tells me, man, that looks like John Bon Jovi. I said, nah, they don't, it's not him. No, no, no. And he kept telling me, man, it's John. And and then like about 30 minutes later, Tico Torre, which is a, a good friend of mine, comes yes. in. And I said, and, and I he sees me, Tico, what are you doing? And then he look, Walt is looking at me. I told you Bon Jovi was here. And what ah. happened was we were playing, we were playing at the hotel there with uh, on tour with Juanes, and they were playing some other show some in a different hotel but they were staying there so we got to hang with tico and we got to 
he wanted to invite me, but the problem was our show was the same day. But it, it's just a wonderful story to, to to for me to go to the gym and see John Bon Jovi working out. You know, and I didn't know it was him. Walt was the one that recognized it. And I saw as soon as I saw Tico, I said, Tico, what are you doing here? And he came, we hugged and we talked. So and that Tico was kind of cool Torres, story. Absolutely. Tico Torres is another one of these unsung, these unsung heroes. He's such a great player. He's got such a great groove. He's been with Bon Jovi for all those years. I've been to Tico's house and 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 helped him out with his, he put in a structural video out many years ago. Great guy and a great, great player. Really, really incredible. I'm glad you brought up his name. Check this out here. Maxim Dioman. Oh, yeah. Maxim Dioman is a wonderful top drummer in the Ukraine who not only has is, 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 is got a great, great school up there, but I do some teaching with the master class for him. He said, when I met you, Richie, for the first time at NAMM, Rushman has said to me that you were the best percussionist as of now and that you were very natural and positive. I think many young musicians need to have the advice – how do how do you how do you develop that natural ability and that positive mentality? How do you help someone with that? I believe, Dom. Every time you first, I have learned this. You know that it's it's not cliche or anything like that. You wake up, you open your eyes, and you thank God. Yeah. But you know what? By being positive, since you wake up, the minute you wake up, it it sort of kind of dictates how you kind of have a a day. Yeah. So you, you know, not, I'm not talking musically speaking. Um, your, you, the way you feel inside is how you are gonna perform. I mean, you have to be like that. It's just something. To me, my father was always my parents. My mom too, always positive. So are my brothers, you know, my family. I always been with positive people. Surround yourself with positive people. That's the answer. Well, That's here's the answer. That, that's that's boy. Here's and here's one right here. Alex Cito, I met Richie in 2004 at Criteria Studios with Lee, which is down in Miami area. We recorded an album with Al Dimiola and uh, Leonid Aquitine. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I remember those sessions very dearly. That was like 14 years ago, maybe. And uh, uh speaking of Al Dimiola, um, I and out of those sessions, there was a singer from Russia. His name is uh, Leonid Agutin. And uh, it just so happens I'm in my life now. I'm sort of doing a little bit of transition because I got the pleasure to produce his record. Wow. And, uh, and, and that was from those sessions. He remembered me from those sessions. For Aldi Miola produced hit that record. Uh, and I got to produce a record uh, last year. And it's been really good. Um, this record, it's like in in three or four or five songs, it's got like over five million views in total. Oh and we already won a couple of awards in uh, for best video and best audio for video. And it's nominated. Uh, or well, hopefully, you'll be nominated for the for the Grammys. And uh, it's been it's been a really blessing to be able to to be how I'm the drivers. Well, be, but having the responsibility as well to yeah. be in the driver's side of a of a of a Lamborghini, <laughs> and uh, having John Secada, I got John Secada, I got Alde Miola, uh -huh. I got Diego Torres, I got Amari Gutierrez, I got top 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 artists which I have recorded on their record. So them being uh, very nice to me, and they come to you know to to be to have a feed on the records, and. Uh, and you know the the manager Alex, Alex has been a blessing because he was like the link for everything, and uh, he's been looking for me for 14 years for this record. So I brought along all my the people from my team in Miami, you know my brother in crime. His name is Camilo Valencia, an amazing producer that that always believed in me over over 30 years. Yeah. And uh, and this is my new thing now. Uh, I'm, I, I'm starting to produce other artists and just, just it's, it, I'm thinking my life is shifting a little bit, but, but yet I still love to do sessions and stuff, but people are calling me, Oh, I don't want you to play drums or percussion. I want you to produce a track now. So it's, <laughs> it's scary, but at the same time, it's sort of kind of happy, 
happy, scary, or or yeah. that's scary, but just keep me on my toes. It keeps me in my toes. That's what it is. But Richard, you are evolving at such a pace, which is so exciting. And these new opportunities are coming because people know you have the experience and you have the knowledge of how to produce great quality music. You've been doing it all of your life, and this is extremely exciting to, just to witness. Talk about this here. Look at this. Carlos mentioned that you recorded the brand new Gloria Estefan album. Oh, yes. Uh, it's called 305, I believe. Brazil 305. It just came out like a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, yeah. you know, I've worked for Emilio again. This the numbers. I worked for Emilio Stefan over 20 years. And I can't tell you how many recordings I've done with him. He's a he's a good friend. He always, yeah. you know, he makes sure I'm okay. And, uh, you know, I also play with his daughter, with Emily Stefan and uh, her mom with Glory. I've done quite a few performances and I've done other recordings. Uh, this new record that they did, they did in Brazil, but, uh, you know, they needed to do post-production. So I got called in and I spent quite a few days and it was fun. It was a bit hard because it was a lot of work, but it was it's a great record. People need to check it out. It's like some old Gloria old stuff, Brazilian style a little bit. I guess I brought I brought in the Brazilian Latin percussion vibe. Yeah. So uh, I was kind of kind of kind of a little bit of the glue in the rhythm section there. So that was fun. Now quite quite a few songs. It's a lot of songs in the record. People need to check it out. They sure will. But you've got so much stuff, Richie, which is really amazing. Just let's go back and talk about the drum set that you have in the back. To talk about the sizes again, and and, and that's a Saturn Five. And you said that was a 24-inch yes. bass drum? Yes, it's a 24 by 18. Speaking of, of hero drummers that I recorded with and uh, that I really love, uh, John Robinson. Oh. I did, I did sessions with him, you know, and uh, he has come to Miami to do sessions with one of my uh, uh, dear friend producers, Rudy Perez. And uh, he introduced me to a very famous group called Los Temerarios from Mexico. They're huge. These people are huge. John Robinson has recorded all the drums for them. Yeah. I got, obviously, I, I did the percussion. And when John came to Miami, and, you know, I've been following this man since Michael Jackson, since Rufus, since all, yeah. all the back, all the stuff he's done. And uh, he always had this particular sound on bass drum, and I know he uses a weird beater, not a normal beater, but also I've talked to him. I was one-on-one -on -one when we did the session, Temerario sessions, and I asked him, John, what is it that the your bass drum? And he says, you want big drum sounds? You get big drums. And I noticed that he had a huge 24 inch. He's a, he's a strictly 24 inch bass drum drummer. Yeah. yeah. And that sort of stuck with me. So I was always played 20 or 22. Ne I never, ever had a big bass drum. Mind you, playing a 24-inch bass drum is a little bit different. You have to push more air. It's more it physical. Hard. Yeah, yeah. But, but the sound, um, the, it's the way the microphone reacts to a 24-inch compared to 22 is different. So I've never, um, I've been playing 24-inch bass drum now for about 16 years. And yeah. and it's just I, that's that's my preference in the studio. Big big drums. I use bigger drums in the studio than when I play live, because of the tuning. Speaking of two, of, of uh, sizes, I I because I you know I am a left-handed, but I play right-handed drum set. Yeah. So my setup to me is very important. Uh, you know, if you have a, like a five piece, if you're a right-handed player, you know you have your rack, you have your second rack, you got your floor top. Yeah. But this is with the right hand. Uh, for me, having two racks on my left above the snare, it's like my perfect setup would be like two toms, floor tom. Like now, I like to use a lot of my left because I'm a true left-handed Yeah, player. I have developed a lot of stuff with my right. But my usual set, Richie setup is 10 inch, 12, 13, 16, 18. Wow. When I play live, when I play live, I go smaller drums. I use 10, 12, 14, 16. 
I use smaller drums for live. But in the recordings and recordings, you want big drums, you have to have big drum. You can have yeah. an eight inch tom and expect it to sound huge. This not possible. You know, so I have very big so what, drums. So what, size I got four have, toms. what size are your toms back there? Well, it's uh, 10 by nine. Right. Because these are power toms. This is not right. regular. 10 by nine, uh, 12 by 10, 13 by 11, 16 by 16, 18 by 16, 24 by 18. Unbelievable. Now, you also have a handful of different snare drums that you use, right? Yes, which, which speaking of snare drum, I got one of my all favorite snare drum and um it, it just so happens is russ i have it here oh man. and i have a cool story about this yeah. i have a cool story about this guy actually um last uh how was it in uh, uh december january February before the pandemic uh they called me to do the new ricky martin record so I did, I played on 11 tracks. I play a lot of tracks. You know that uh, it's it's more like pop, electronic, reggaeton-ish with lots of percussion. Yeah. So uh, in one of the last song of the record, which was, I think I recorded February, March, around that time. Um, there's this particular song, which was like a medium to slow tempo song. And the... Uh, producer montana 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 he's from puerto rico he calls me up yeah. and tell me rich i got this track it's a little bit different compared to the you know the high energy ricky martin stuff yeah this is a chill out uh kind of vibe i'm gonna send you the tracks and you you know do your do your magic and then i'll edit and you know we go back and forth yeah it just so happens that this song man this is one of my really cool stories about the you know recording it's a duo with sting oh uh so re so this is i believe this is the first recording of sting singing in spanish so it's it just came out now it's called um i believe uh i, f I forgot the name of the title but it, it's if you google it uh i can't remember i went blank but anyway <laughs> there's the song has like a little marching. I recorded 20, 20 tracks of this guy. Wow. 20 tracks of uh, the Russ uh, snare drum. And uh, he made it to the record. He made it to the record. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Russ doesn't know this. So he, he's going to get a kick out of that. <laughs> that I use the snare drum for, for the Sting Ricky Martin single. It just came out. Recently. Oh, that is, that's, that's, I can't remember the name of the song, but you can Google it. Yeah, we'll Google. We'll find out. I want everyone to do that. So that stand Are there other standards that you use also? Yes, one of my. Uh, well, I got the the Equinox. Is one of my favorite snare drums that I go to. I use. I try to. You know, I do sometimes. I have to muffle, because sometimes I can ha not. You have to have zero ring whatsoever. But yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a believer like Russ. I love open drum sounds, but my engineering technical part of my brain is like, sometimes I have conflicts because there's stuff that you can, if you have a ring, you cannot get rid of. And if you have a ring in a different frequency or a different pitch of the song, it means bad, bad yeah, news. Yeah. But that's just a part, a technical part of, uh, of Richard, of Richie that, that worries about that stuff. But I, by the way, my drums are completely open. I don't have any, I only have a little bit of, uh, I have the Remo Dave Weckl muffle. Right. Only on the beater side. That's it, on my bass drum and nothing else. My my toms are completely open, completely open. Yeah. I might tweak a little bit on the snare, but usually as you can see, you know, I have nothing. I record, you know, yeah. with nothing. Beautiful. And uh, which brings me to another thing, uh, just before, uh, like two months ago, uh, Mape is gonna have a surprise to pe uh, uh, to people. With it's a cool. I, I I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but it's a really cool video. We have a bunch of drummers handing something to each other. Yes. And so, so therefore, uh, about a month ago, they sent me this this guy here. 
Woo! That's the, and uh, it's, called the, the, it's yeah. called the Predator. The Predator. Well, listen, here's Mark Bennett. Do you still have the copper snare? Yeah. Oh, I said, I have it. I still have it, and I have used the crap out of it. He, well, uh, Mark said, I, I can keep it. You can use it. You can use it. You know what? But this thing is one of the best snare drums I have ever played. I mean, Fantastic. they set the bar really high. With, with these models, people really, really need to check them out. Yeah. And they sound incredible, Dom. In the and in the video that we did, and I I did a couple of other things that that I recorded on my own. This is why I still have the snare. Plus, it's been in other records. Wow! And uh, you know, I asked Mark. I asked Mark if I could keep it a little longer. <laughs> I, I I'll ship it back. But but this thing, this snare drum, it just sounds wonderful. You know, they again, the construction of these drums, down people, believe me, they're all gonna the jaw are gonna drop when they start right. playing these, these instruments that is so great mark is the a and r you know the person for for mapex drums and the fact that he's checking us out here and he helps organize these interviews thank you mark so much fantastic so yeah what, mark well yeah, i i still have it okay i still have it <laughs> and here's here's kurt covington kirk is captain kirk is on the scene Kurt Covington is a phenomenal drummer. I was supposed to interview him last week, but he ended up getting a session. So we're going to reschedule Kirk. For sure, great, great drummer. But he knows those snare drums, as he calls them, are real badass. So it's really great to have, have Kirk's incredible approval for those drums. Thank you, Kirk. <laughs> awesome. Hi to Kirk. I got to play with him with the sessions. Incredible, right? Kirk is another phenomenal, phenomenal player. And I, I, I look forward he's to having him. He's powerful. Oh. Very, he's, he's very powerful. Very yeah. powerful drummer. Yeah, yeah. Great, great stuff. Man, this is amazing, Rich, to have this time. So what message would you leave people here with? What would you tell them with? I mean, you know, we've got so many people here. Denise Wiggins came on. Um, you know, it, it's just, you know, she said here, you know, your happiness with your beloved instruments makes me so happy for you. <laughs> Well, you know what, Dom? Well, okay, I'll leave with, the, with this thought. It's not, you know, they always say the Indian is, is not the arrow, it's the Indian. But let me tell you, a good Indian with an amazing arrow can <laughs> take you very, very far. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that's that's great that you say that. Mapex has been so great. They are phenomenal product. They're great, great people. They, they, the, the, the price range is incredible, too. And they're, they're making product that is so fantastic, which is... Again, here you are in your studio, the Mapex product, with the amount of stuff that you've recorded and that you've used and that you've had that sound on there too. They are really honored to have you along in their family. I'm blessed to have them in my, in my family as well. <laughs> Boy, thank you so much. Look at this here. We, there's people that are here. Ayana Bravo, I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's my daughter. That's my daughter. I'm proud of her. She's an amazing singer. Absolutely. What a beautiful girl, man. That's fantastic. Richard, you've got a family that's amazing. You have come from a family that's amazing. You are giving us great music. You are giving us excitement, emotion, all wrapped up in your spirit of how you deliver everything that you do. So for that, I thank you so much. My pleasure, Dom. My pleasure. My, my pleasure. And I, I'm just going to keep on playing more drums and produce more music and uh, a lot of stuff are coming up. My new record is coming up, made in Miami next year. Really? Uh, I'm starting to produce other projects and uh, uh, starting. I, I have a lot, quite a quite amount of work coming up for me as far as sessions. Boy, that is fantastic. You know, I ask everyone to go to the sessions panel and go watch the interviews that I've done with yourself, Richie, and many of the names: Lee Levin, Rudy Perez, all these guys that you mentioned. We got them there. That we've we've got we've captured their words. There's a, a another whole level to the interview. So check that out. On behalf of Mapex Richard, we thank you so much for spending some time with us. You are fantastic. I look forward to seeing you soon in person, getting down to Miami. Okay, my brother. You take care and God bless you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you all next week. Fantastic. Thanks so much. <laughs>